All right, let's get right into the tutorials for object photography. Like I said in the introduction, you've got to get really good at object photography before you can get good at people photography. So, that, so that's what this one is all about, really mastering your photography skills. In the first level, we just kind of figured out how to use the equipment and the apps. In this one, we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of how to take really good photos. Okay, so assignment number one is called the roaming toy assignment. Okay. You take any toy that you have kicking around your house, something small that you can carry around in your pocket or whatever. I usually use Mike. And I take them around and you want to take photos around your house, around your classroom, around your school, around your neighborhood. Make sure to get permission of your teachers and your parents to be able to go and do this. But just put the toy out there in just unusual circumstances and really work on the composition of your photographs. Try to stay away from putting everything right smack in the middle of the photo, okay? Really work at putting it out on the edges. You have the grid there. I like to sometimes, now not all the time, sometimes putting it in the middle is correct, but look at this. If I take a picture of this plant or this flower, and if I put it just in the middle, it's, you know, it looks like everybody else's photo. But then if I work those lines and kind of take it a little more towards the top, use that dead space, that area around it, and fill it up with something interesting, then you get a good photograph, okay? So really think about that when you're photographing your toy out there in the wild and just work on getting some great photos and really work on that composition. And of course, you already know about lighting, making sure it's lit well from level one, make sure that it's in focus, all those things I shouldn't have to tell you because you already know how to do that. Okay, the second assignment is called shadows. So same thing, when you're out and about, you need to be someplace where there's a nice bright source of light, like the sun, okay? And probably not at noon when the sun is at its highest, probably morning, afternoon, those type of things. So you start to get these long shadows. And when photographing shadows, again, we're talking about composition. You want to make sure that whatever the subject of your photo, and in this case, shadows, is really what's taking over the photo. It's the dominant thing in the photo. Don't take a picture of a, of a you know, like let's say a fire hydrant, big fire hydrant with a little shadow next to it. No, 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 you wanna take a picture of the big shadow with just a little bit of the fire hydrant in it, just so like, oh, I know what that is, or maybe they don't know what it is, but really work. Again, this object photography level is all about learning composition and what makes a good photograph and building on those skills that we got in level one. Assignment number three is called shoot a color. So again, when you're out and about in your home, in your classroom, in your school, in your neighborhood, really focus in on one color and try to take as many photographs of that color. Now don't cheat and go with something simple like green and you know, photograph every plant and blade of grass that's around you. Go something a little you know, more complicated. And again, make that the subject of the photo, make it fill most of the frame. And then when we do a series of these, then you can see how, you know, let's go with at least maybe five photographs of things of the same color-ish, and then we'll go from there. Assignment number four is similar to assignment number three, and that is I want you to go around shooting a similar shape, square, triangle, circle, whatever, but go around and really look for this. Through these lessons, I'm really teaching you to have a photographer's eye really look for things that you want to look for. Uh, so many people are just ambush photographers. They just like jump in, snap a photo and, and jump away. And then they get back and they realize it's not a very good photo. But if you take the time to really compose that shot and look for the shot, you can really get a great photo. So go around, pick a complicated shape. Again, don't go with something easy. And then it might be something really close up. So you can use your close up skills from level one, or it might be far away. It just depends on what the photograph is. And remember, it, the subject, the, the shape that you're photographing should take up most of the space of the frame. Okay, assignment number five, and that is shoot on a white background. So this one's pretty cool. You got to go find a big piece of white paper. If you don't have a big piece of white paper, I usually kind of tape together some other smaller pieces. And you want to put it against a wall or something so that you get a nice curve to the paper. What you're trying to do is not get an, an edge. You don't want that border edge of uh, say the corner of the, where the floor meets a wall. You want that curved, okay? And once you have that curved, then you go out and find some lights and you're looking for what's called soft lights. Hard lights are just raw light bulbs that you would see like in a reading light or something like that. And they, sh they throw down a really 
Hard light in the fact that they make hard shadows, really sharp edged shadows. Soft lights are like this one over my shoulder here, and it's got kind of a paper cover to it, and it just makes it look, you know, it just softens the light so you really get away from shadows. And that's a really interesting thing. So if you don't have that, uh, just try to back up the light source, maybe go with the window or something. But you need to have multiple light sources. So you try to get, uh, you know, try to have no shadow whatsoever when you shoot an object on this white background. So once you get the background in place, then put your object on it, get your lighting around it. So you try to eliminate any shadow that you can and then photographic. This is great for, you know, showing people uh, tutorials, showing them, you know, different things that you have. And it's a really kind of cool effect. And you've, you've ever wondered, like, how did they get that so nice? This is the trick. So we call this one the white background. Assignment number six is called reflection. Go around and try to find anything with a reflective surface. So glass, stainless steel, chrome, those type of things. And if you have to get close to it, you know, I don't know, or if window, maybe you get far away and just uh, get something, re you're going for whatever's reflected in it. Okay, so try to find something really interested that's in a reflection and make that the subject of this photo. And you can have a lot of fun with this one. And the last assignment for this badge is called Step by Step. Okay, so for this tutorial, what you wanna do is, you know, there's companies like Lego and Ikea, and they really pride themselves in being able to give people instructions with no words. Their images are so good, people understand what the next step is by just looking at it. And I want you to do something too. Try to find something that at least is five or six steps and then photograph each one of those steps in such a way that people will completely understand. And if you wanna make it really cool, photograph right directly above it. Okay, so hold your camera right above it because this makes for a really cool artistic you know, tutorial shot. And then just change what you need to change for each shot so that you show step by step by step. And then when someone looks at it, they're like, I totally understand. No, no words need to be said. You don't need to put a, a voiceover on top of it. You don't need to put words on the screen, but really just focus on showing somebody how to do something step by step. That's the last one, okay? All right, so there are your seven assignments. Go have fun with them. Make sure that you always have your parents' permission and your teacher's permission to be able to do these photographs. Never photograph uh, people. We're only doing objects right now. And just stay safe and have a fun time, okay?